The next thing I want to talk about, and that is HDR or high dynamic range photography. Here was a photograph of this vehicle with a gun on the concrete underneath. And fortunately, it's concrete and not asphalt. We can actually see the gun, but it is a deep shadow. So what can we do? Well, one of the things we can do is this HDR technique. And for that, we can go ahead and take one photograph like uh, this, exposed for the overall brightness. So this is our first photograph. And then take a second photograph exposed just for the shadow area for the gun itself. And we know how to do that. You can just point your camera down in there and hit the AEL button and step back and take your second picture. Now you wanna have both pictures taken from the same point if possible. There is a way that you can get the computer to align them, but it's a lot easier and a lot more reliable if you leave your camera in the same place for both shots. So what would I do? I would actually take this photograph first. So I point my cam, I have my camera ready on the tripod, all that, and I say, okay, now I take the, the whole tripod and camera and I stick it under the car in the shadow, hit the AEL button, bring the camera back where I need it to be, get it all arranged, snap my picture. Now, because I had, I had the AEL button depressed, it's going to use the exposure from the shadow area. Then I just simply take a second photograph without the AEL, automatic exposure lock, and I get this photograph. All right, then we take the two into Photoshop or another program, and we end up with them blended like so. So here we have exposed for overall brightness on the top left. Bottom uh, left, we have exposed for the shadow area. Combine the two, and we end up with this. Here is a very nice photograph of a lighthouse, sunset, lots of shadow areas and highlight areas. This is beautiful, but that's not how your camera would normally record. So what we need to do is actually blend some images together with the HDR. So here is um, a photograph that is what the camera wants to use. And notice that we're gonna have a problem with shadows and highlights. So we take the first photograph is what the camera wants to use. Then maybe we open up two stops. That's what we have here. We opened up two stops and now we have a significantly brighter one. That's gonna help us with all the shadow areas. Then we close down two stops from the original and take this for the highlight areas. Now you remember how to do that. You have the plus minus button on your camera, your exposure compensation. So you go ahead and you press that, you go to plus two, snap the picture. Press it again, go to minus two, snap the picture. Remember to go back to zero when you're done so all your subsequent photographs are exposed properly. Then when you combine these together, that's when you end up with this really nice result here. If you had not done that, it would have looked like the top left. Show Photoshop. Let's use those photographs we just saw. Okay, I go to File and then to Automate. And what I wanna do is merge to HDR. So I just go ahead and I click there. It gives me this dialog box, and I can now look for the files I want to use. Now, I'm going to actually load all three of these at one time. All right. So I have my lighthouse normal exposure, my overexposure, and my underexposure. Now, when you do this, there's a box down here that says attempt to automatically align source images. If you took your photograph, all three photographs in this case, on a tripod, 
and there's no movement in your scene at all, then you can leave that unchecked and it'll be a little quicker. But if perhaps you're, you were hand holding your camera and you took the three pictures trying to stay in the same spot, or there's a flag that was moving or something like that, or a tree that might be moving in the breeze, then you wanna check that box. Then you go ahead and check okay. And now it's gonna do its thing. And if we look on the right-hand side here in the layers, we see the three layers and then it's merging it. Let me show you doing the same thing in a different program. This is called Photo Matrix. And now what I want to do is put my bracketed photographs there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load those same three pictures. There they are. And it gives you a little preview of what it might look like. Now I'm going to go to next. Do you want to remove ghosts? This is the same as checking that little box. And so we'll just say yes. There aren't any, but there we go. Now it's generating a preview. So there it is. It has now blended those three. And what it also does is it gives me different choices on the right-hand side here. But on the left-hand side, I can do all kinds of subtle changes. You can have HDR automatically turned on in your camera. Almost all the cameras now have that. I don't recommend it for forensic use. I think things like that, uh, if you need to do anything like that, it should be done in post-production. So you have your original photographs in this case. You know that you've had to take more than one because you want to do the HDR later. And your un those original photographs are going to stay as originals, untouched, never messed with and then you do the post-production photoshop photo matrix whatever or other there are other brands that all should be done after the fact so that there's less to criticize in court